in a world that's changing as fast as ours is, it's vital that we're always looking for better ways to prep our kids to meet that world. And I've come to Austin, Texas, where Travis Early College High School is building a maker-based problem-solving curriculum to better help its kids meet the realities of a 21st century society. Let's see what they're doing. Hey, so talk to me about what you guys are doing here at Travis Early College High School. So what we're trying to do is create a place that actually helps the community. So when you think about Makerspace, it's more than just what happens at the school. So what we're trying to do is create an area where students, community members, teachers, uh, businesses from around the area can come in and use a space for whatever their needs are, but in particular we're trying to solve issues that our community is seeing. Can you guys talk to me about the forensics class and that, how that fits into the general program? So we have a law and criminal justice program here, an incredible teacher doing a lot of the, the law part and court systems. And then we have um, a great forensics program as a part of that. And the teachers work collectively and their students go to competitions together um, where they do arrest and fingerprinting and things like that. So it's really cool. Um, but forensics is a very popular program. It's become, you know, kind of like when Emeril Lagasse made being a chef famous, all the crime scene shows have made for forensics such an interesting pathway to kids and so that program's really blown up and so we have an incredible teacher and he does great work with the forensic students. Hey good morning Adam. Good morning how are you doing Zach? I'm doing well. Tell me what you guys are working on in here today. We're working on a couple things here in our forensic science class and one of our goals is to see if we can use fingerprints and making molds to beat fingerprint devices. I have a little experience with that. Yeah, we've had the pleasure of viewing some of the programs that you've done with Mythbusters and mm -hmm. also looking at a documentary program that you put on the tested website of yours. And so some of the fingerprint things that you've done before, we've looked at, we've used some of those same skills and techniques, but we've addressed a couple other more low budget ideas as well. Okay. So, so what we have are several students completing the process where they're going back, they've already made their molds, the molds today were made from a hot glue gun. Mm -hmm. um, there was a certain time period where the students put some water on their finger, let it cool off, and then made the actual cast in the mold. And now they're using three different materials to go back and make the reverse or the plastic print. Very cool. Um, they're using the dragon skin right now. Um, they're also using what's called silicon RTV, which mm -hmm. is room temperature vulcanizing. And they're also using just standard white glue. Fantastic. This looks like a lot of fun. So you're building a, 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 a curriculum in which you're giving the kids problems to solve, but you're not uh, necessarily sure of how they're going to solve them. There must be plenty of occasions where you get surprised. Absolutely. Um, and there's, there's a term that we use every once in a while. It's called success engineering. So you know you have civil engineering, and, and you look around kind of mechanical engineering, right? But success engineering is not knowing what we're not here to tell them how to do it right, right? there are some projects you know we, we believe in scaffolding and differentiation right mm -hmm. there are kids who you need steps for them to finish a project but the majority is here's a problem or you create a problem and then you go and solve it we're here to facilitate we're here to provide the materials help them through some of the um, issues that they might have as they're trying to discover what to do but absolutely it's the best learning when you don't know what's going on and what's going to happen all right and so now that the students are getting through with the process of just how to make them we have some products that are already made from a previous time that we were together last week so when we come over to station two we have the students that have already created their molds, their prints, and now they're going to take some time to separate these. Oh, very Over cool. Over here on the light box, I have a couple of things that I've already made. Um, there's the variation here with our silicone RTV. Looks yeah. just like a real fingertip, and yeah. it feels like skin. That's wonderful. This is um, the dragon skin, which I went back and treated with a little bit of this magnetic fingerprint powder. In the video on the tested website, I saw that the individual used some graphite to kind of give it a little bit more texture, and so oh. that's what I've done here. We use this lifting powder in our competitions as well, just going looking for latent prints. And the ones that we've made the most copies of are the ones that are coming straight from the white glue. And even though you can't see as much detail on the light, if you were to hold it up and see that it's transparent, yeah. you would see a lot of, of the actual what are referred to as the minutia or the yeah. smaller distinguishing ridge characteristics. We've had some mixed results in the longevity of them, yeah. but let's see what the students have done. Why is teaching kids about problem solving so important? 
For me, it's um, I've become obsessed with the process of it and helping kids understand how important their thought processes are and documenting those thought processes. Um, I think too many times we just speed through the process and um, I've shown them and been trying to show them whether it's through social media or a notebook or whatever how to document their successes and failures so that others can learn from that um, because I think that's such a good life skill for them to have, for them to go back and look at their early sketches and see what they learned and what they would do differently. So the thought process behind it, it's to me one of the most important things they're learning in problem solving. Well, thank you guys so much for giving me the 30,000 foot view of this incredible program. It's really inspiring. Appreciate it, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So Adam, we have a really low budget clocking device okay. that works with fingerprint detection. We see a little screen where, if, again, if I place my fingerprint appropriately, it'll show me the fingerprint. Oh, okay. And then it'll say verified. Again, ZC is for me, Zach Christensen. So a couple of these students have their fingerprints loaded in there and their initials as well. And so if it verifies, it's going to come up and say their initials and say thank you. If not, it's going to ask them to do it again. Luis is going to take a look at the possibilities here. You want to talk with Adam about the process or anything that you're thinking about? The hard part about it is that you're not sure whether it's going for the tip, the sides, or the actual center of right. the fingerprint. Right. Right. Let's do it. Let's I'm dying to see if this works. Okay, let's go. And this is uh, the RTV silicone. This is a uh, dragon skin. Oh, this is dragon skin. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Let's see. Press again. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. Press again. Let's move it a little, try to see if that changes it. Thank you. Beat it! It got Excellent. it! Well done! Beautiful! Luis. This is the uh, white glue? The white glue. Yeah. yeah. Right. It doesn't even want to recognize it. You gotta give it, um, give it a little moisture. And oh, okay. on your finger and on the actual surface itself, the white glue, again, has had some success. In fact, oh, okay. that's what I've used on both. Yeah. So give it a try. And then you might want to try dragon skin and just go through the process. Thank you. It did it. Yeah. And it worked. Well done. Now we have two materials, one device, yeah. same techniques. I was really impressed that they were able to use multiple materials to actually beat this. What, aside from the, uh, the, the vulnerability of some biometrics, what are you hoping the kids take away from this exercise? I really want them to walk away with some skills as far as utility and relevance in the workplace so that they can apply these in a hands-on manner, no pun intended. Well, and you're also teaching them the specific problem solving involved with trying to beat this, all the different materials, the different methods for, for applying a fake fingerprint. It's a little different than our procedures that we would do like in a lab setting where it'd be like, here's step one, two, three, four, here's the end result. And that again, puts students in a frame of mind there's only one way to do things. Right. What we're really looking at is the possibilities to explore and to say that maybe I didn't come up with it, but you can, here's just the materials that we have. But I also notice you walking them through a scientific methodology. Let's see a control, let's see a controlled success, a controlled failure, so we have a bracket, now let's try the thing. I mean, you are inculcating them with the scientific method at every stage. I would like to think that these things go on into their own life, whether or not, again, it's making something in their garage, um, cooking for someone, but going back and being able to teach someone else the process because they've gone through and actually documented everything. Zach, thank you so much for showing me this. this is really awesome exercise. Thanks for your time, Adam. I'm going to remove this from the front of my shop. That is so inspiring to me that Travis is not just teaching the kids problem solving, but they're letting the kids bring the problems to them and the teachers aren't even sure how they're going to get solved. That is teaching a really, really important lesson of self-sufficiency that those kids will carry with them for the rest of their lives.